the BSC to ETH 2.0. Uh, I like it. Do, do, so you like it. Do we, do we even know that they won't be voting anymore? I mean, couldn't that still be implemented too? I mean, I know that it's kind of like going away maybe by default, but maybe Richard puts it back. I mean, puts, you know, implements it and, you know, new stuff like that. And also c- maybe compared to better for the long term. I think, I think that's consensus, but will it cause another delay? Like not that we'll know about it, but will there be another internal delay to get this stuff figured out? I actually don't think so. And here's the reasoning for that. I liked the E2.0 fork because there's a part in there that kind of everybody ignores. It's E2.0 is already audited. The biggest thing with code is audits. The audits take the longest. And if they, if they wanted to build their own consensus off of BSC, which was the, the plan, they still had to audit it. They had to fix a couple bugs, a lot of bugs. And then they had to audit it. I think the fact that the audits are already done for most of the consensus code on E2.0, I think it's actually faster time to market. And then the fact that, because the way I kind of like putting it for like a non-thing tech people to understand is now we basically have the Ethereum dev team on our side. All the improvements they make to Ethereum, they're making to Pulse Chain because it's um, code for code compatible because they're starting from the same code base. And then they can just merge it in. If they started from BSC, that's, that's a massive already shift in the code base from there. But if they fork from E2.0, the Ethereum dev team is now on our side. Mm. So I like it. I'm actually a big fan of it. That's the simplest way to put it. I mean, if sharding, if sharding gets implemented, we also get it. Yeah, definitely for the long term, it's it's something where we are able to consume the features that come in. Um, and it just it just seemed like at the time it was such a it's a little bit of a gut punch of like ah, but and you said there's not going to be any more delay, but that can't it can't just be a seamless transition for that. There's got to be some time set aside. And I know we'll know when testnet v3 comes out. And who knows? Maybe all this stuff. Maybe next month. Maybe literally all this stuff comes out next month. Testnet v3 documentary. Boom, boom, boom. Maybe all this stuff happens, and then it's just like no worries whatsoever. Uh, but I certainly didn't initially take it as I took it as good news. But it was just not that like, you know, it, it wasn't this sweet taste in my mouth. I was like, oh, okay, all right, I get it, I get it. But all right, I get it. It was kind of one of those things. 